That's definitely one way to get us going on a Sunday morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you. Not quite as buzzy as last week, and that could be. I think there's something special happening today. What's that football? Tyler Swift's board. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but maybe we're starting early on our Super Bowl Sunday. But I do know there's some sickness um, going around again, so please, uh, if you see somebody that is not next to you in the queue, that usually sits to you next to the queue, um, check in on them and see, make sure everything's okay. Um, announcements for this week. The office will be closed on Tuesday, so if you've got anything to talk to Michelle about, don't call her Tuesday. Um, Ash Wednesday service will be at 6 o'clock o- this Wednesday, the 14th, so um, come and, and be a part of that service. We've got handbell practice. Yeah, I thought I heard little feet. <laughs> Do we have any other announcements this morning? We will meet at 5 for handbells. We will not meet early today like we did last week. We will do that next week. Thank you. Any other announcements then? I'm <laughs> tired. I'm going to have to talk more. So that, that we don't hear exactly what's happening in the in the polling family. But we thank you all for being here. We're so glad to see each and every one of you. So let us now come together in an attitude of worship. Please stand if able.
join me in our affirmation of faith found on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. season we had yesterday, and uh, we'll get some more rain and possibly cold weather, but that's okay, because uh, we'll, we rejoice the Lord has given us another day. Today I'll be reading to you from Psalms chapter 50, uh, page 319 of your pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along, and I'll be reading the first six verses of Psalms 50, and let us hear God's word. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, out of Zion perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. For him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a sacrifice with me by sacrifice, made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Are there prayer concerns this morning? Prayer of Thanksgiving. We're glad to have uh, Charles back with us. He had a doctor's visit, a hospital visit. Him and him and uh, him and Jeff Graham tried to do it at the same time. I think about the same time. So. <laughs> trying to show out, but we're glad you're both back with us. Is there anyone else we need to lift up? Harold, the joy that tomorrow Debbie will be 50 years old, and uh, <laughs> we're very happy about that. My child, right? I have a child that's 26. <laughs> that's amazing. Five year old. That child. Um, Happy birthday. Lois yeah. Azar wanted me to uh, remember Joan Newell, Pastor Newell's wife. Um, she's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So they would like um, that family held up in prayer. Because I understand uh, Reverend Newell also has some health issues going on, I think. So keep that family in prayer. Thank you so much. Nobody's unaware of Chaplin's birthday is this week, too. <laughs> it's Thursday. Nobody knew that. Oh, yeah, that's Thursday, yeah. <laughs> we celebrate all night. He's already sent me an order. Yeah, I text. I text. I got a text that said last, at the end of January, Dad, you will be available on this day and this day to take me out to eat. And we will go and do what I want to do all day. And so I have my orders. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you. Remember Lawrence. Also remember Carol Duvall, too. She's had, a, she's had some tests done this week or checked out for her back. She's I visited with her. She's doing doing good, but she's not where she needs to be yet. So she appreciates your prayers. 
Also, Fran uh, is not, uh, she's having some breathing problems and deep memory prayers. Anyone else? <laughs> Any joys besides the 50 year old? Anybody? You ever been to the Sunday Hall? That old ugly hole over there that used to be called the wall? See, Larry, why does it make you want to see it? It looks perfect. It does. It's beside the people, Larry. It's very good. Looks really good. Fellowship Hall downstairs, it had some water damage, it's been repaired. After many hours of Denise threatening Larry, it looks really good. Anyone else? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you thanking you for another day you bless us with. God, it is good to be in your house today, to have our hearts and minds and our spirits renewed, to be with fellow believers, and Lord, we just thank you for them and for those that have come this way. We thank you for the beautiful music we've already heard this morning. We thank you for the music of singing and listening and being part of. God, we thank you for every part of this church that we were able to contribute to in some way and be part of. Now, God, as we pray together, we remember those who are sick. We remember those names have been mentioned and lifted up. We celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and those things that you have given us, God, another day. And as we pray together... God, we're called together to pray the prayer you taught us to pray. So now we humbly come together and pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is going to be number 451 in your hymnal, Be Thou My Vision. Please stand with the band. Okay, what happens to a caterpillar? 
turns into a butterfly. Sometimes caterpillars, it kind of looks like a worm, doesn't it? Looks like a worm. Worms are not, worms are not always the best things to have, are they? Unless you're fishing or something. Worms, sometimes they can be kind of. You like butterflies? I do too. But sometimes it's a long journey for that caterpillar to get to be that butterfly. It has to go through a process and we learn all that in school and they, they spin them up in a little web and gets in there and stays in there over a time, a little cocoon thing. And then what happens after a while? What happens to that cocoon? The butterfly comes out and he comes out and stretches its wings and, and it's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. And it flies away and it's how, that's pretty neat, isn't it, to see a butterfly. And if you didn't know where it come from, you think it just showed up one day all beautiful. But you know what? We all are kind of like the caterpillar. We start out in this world as young children. We grow up and we have to go through a lot of things in life and a lot of struggles and trials and tribulations and, and good times and bad times. And then we get to that point that we learn about God and we learn about God and He does it like He does the caterpillar. He helps us change into the beautiful person that we are today. Did you know that? God helps us do that. So all of you are like butterflies and you are developing into this most beautiful butterfly and that's called a child of God. Isn't that awesome? Be a child of God. And when you love butterflies and God loves you, I imagine how that's going to be, how beautiful it is. So let's pray and thank God for transforming us into something wonderful. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for loving us so much that you let us be transformed from the creature we once were to who we are today and even more as we grow up and be adults and Lord, as we begin to be disciples for you. So God, thank you for this exciting time in our lives as young people and as we grow. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And amen. Y'all go with Miss Kate. Thank y'all for being here. It's exciting times. I'm going to ask our ushers to come out and receive our morning offering. service to be reminded to give back. We have been blessed with so much. And so we give back that portion that's needed, Lord, to reach those that are disenfranchised, those that are without, uh, the community that struggles, Lord, we are, we are extension of your hands. And God, we pray that you now bless the gift and the giver as we now, Lord, continue to do the work of the church. Bless these gifts in the name of Jesus.
Today's scripture reading is from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. We want to welcome all those that are watching online today. I see several here that's watching. Thank you for, for watching our, uh, our live feed. Thank you, Scott, for making that possible. And uh, we do are able to reach others that are not able to be here today for whatever reason. It's a very good ministry. So thank God for you that are watching today. You're a part of this congregation. Today I'll be reading from um, Mark chapter 9, verse 2 through 9. On page 44 of your pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along with us. And let us hear God's word together. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. And led them up in a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could even bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with, with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were, ter for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there were a voice, This is my son. The beloved, listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us, let us pray together. God, open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to see and to hear and to feel your presence. To know, dear God, that this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us know that this is the place that we need to be today. Whether online, listening to your word, or here in presence. Lord, we know that you're here. And we want to feel this transformation that Peter and James and John were able to see. To realize who Jesus really is and to invite you into our hearts. Lord, may you be the speaker today, speak through us, the words that are needed, to touch the hearts of men, women, and children, and those who have ears to hear, the good news. And Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. When one thing it says here, it kind of just glared at me, is this translation of, uh, I've heard them say as white as snow as garment and different, but this says more than you could bleach. I just thought that was interesting. I, maybe it's just me, but to say, well, it's so white, it's more than you could even bleach it out. And, and that's pretty white. That's, uh, that's pretty bright. But I think about it, it's, a, it's the glow, even more than a lamp that Jesus was putting off. It's more than, than we could imagine. And, and with, with all of our our special effects and things in society today we watch movies and things they can really bring out the imagination of how things could look and how that uh, we can make it even more grander than ever imagined but this was a grand moment this is a grand moment when jesus it says he was transfigured he was he was brought out brightly for them to see james and and john and, and peter and there they were led up to the mountain with jesus and and here he is bright in front of them. And, and there among this uh, situation he saw, or this place he saw, uh, he saw Elijah and he saw Moses. And some of the studies we've looked at, it talks about Elijah being from the, the prophetic side. You know, think about Elijah and the prophet that the Savior would come. And, and then you have Moses who, who brought the law down to people and, and God's law and and so it's God's law and the prophecy of God and then the fulfillment of the law and the prophecy. Jesus standing there, God incarnated right in front of him. It was an amazing moment. Peter, like us, had to say something, right? Had to say something. You know, when you're in situations sometimes, the silence is just, is deafening. You know, you've got to say something. You know, we, we go to... Um, a funeral home and visit somebody, people say stuff, they, they just got to say something. Sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's inappropriate, or, or you're on a special occasion and you don't know what to say, and you just got to say something. So Peter says, hey, this is a great time. 
This is good, Lord. We need to build three tabernacles, one for Elijah and one for Moses and one for you. He, he didn't know what to say. He was terrified as they stood there and they saw this. But then God brings into focus what is going on. Speaks to us, he says, I'm a cloud that speaks to us and speaks to him that day and those around and says, this is my son. He points out what is not obvious at that moment as Peter was trying to figure out and they were trying to figure out what was going on. This is my son. My beloved. My son, my beloved. The one that, that Elijah talked about in prophecy. The one that Moses brought us through the law. And the one now who is in flesh stands with you today. This is my son, my beloved son, who has been transfigured right in front of you. And listen to him. Now at that point, that's where I get the word being transformed. Because when we realize who Jesus is, we begin to be transformed. Transformed into the disciple of God, the disciple of Christ. I remember transforming from where I was to where I'm at. And it seemed like, if I look back, it was a long time ago. But yet, when I begin to really think about it, it seems like yesterday. The scripture talks about how life is so fleeting, it's so fragile. You know, a moment you're born, and the next moment you die. We're reminded of that on Ash Wednesday. We come together and we do the sign of the cross on our foreheads. We're reminded of the words that you are dust, and so you shall return to this earth. We are so fragile, and as we are transformed, it is only in a fleeting moment. That moment when we're born and our families gather and they celebrate our birth, that day that we leave this walk of life and they celebrate the life that has been given. It's a transformation. Now, as many have said, it's important what we do between that time of birth and death, that transformation, as one poet talked about, it's about the dash. It's between the birth date and the, the expiration date, the day we pass. That dash, what do we do in that middle time? Do we listen to Jesus who he says, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him? Or do we go our own way? Do we listen to him and are we transformed into the disciple and follower of Jesus that we are called to be? Are we fruitful and do the things that God has called us to do? Are we laborers in the field? Or are we just watchers on the side? Now, I talked to the kids about a butterfly. I think that is one of the most amazing things to me. To see a caterpillar struggling through life, trying to get inching along the way, that little small feet they have. You know, it's just amazing. They try to got a picture. Now, you probably never thought about a caterpillar having little feet, but now you'll be looking for those little feet. But they're making their little ways to to a tree somewhere, they'll climb up that tree, and they'll get to a place, and they'll begin to take the silk from their body and spin themselves into a, in a little cocoon, and, and that, is, that is their goal, that is their purpose to get there, so they can become all that, that God created them to be. And so we are much like that caterpillar, we're going through life, you know, we try to struggle through, as children, what do we do? We try to keep them out of the doctor's office as much as possible, because it seems like every time you turn around, you've got runny noses and all those things, you're going to doctors. Uh, when I used to well, drive a school bus, uh, when my nephew was in, and my great nephew was in class in school, and uh, trying to make sure he had, was got to class in school, uh, his family situation, and so I would drive a school bus, and I'd make sure he was there. And those little kids would get on the bus every day, some kind of sickness. And they always want to come and hug the bus driver. And I used to say it took me three months to get my, my inoculation. I mean, I was like, like get inoculated for whatever they had. I mean, to get immune to that. And I remember kids would come up and they say, Mr. Steve said, I, I wasn't at school yesterday day before because I had the flu. And he'd say, hug me. And I'd say, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
But it's a struggle for them. It's a struggle for us. We try to make it to that place where we're trying to be all God wants us to be, to be transformed. And then we get to the teenage years, and what happens? We get an attitude, don't we? We think we know that everything is way our way, and we begin to go through that, and we go through those struggles. And I remember uh, how happy I was when my kids finally graduated from high school to get out of that. And how I wish I could take them back sometime. Then the children rearing days for them. Adulthood, all the mistakes they have to go through, trial and error, as a Dave Rams used to say, pay a lot of stupid tax before you get successful. Make a lot of mistakes. But we like the caterpillar are still struggling along the way. We get to that place, we finally get to that branch, and hope nobody cuts the branch off. Hope a bird doesn't come by and gobble us up. And then finally that moment, that butterfly that finally survives and gets to that great moment, they're transformed. They come out with all their beauty. Their days are numbered. But how beautiful they are as they begin to be transfigured and transformed into a world. Being the light that the world needs to see. Being the beauty that the world needs to behold that God created. So we are, we are much like that. And as we realize who Jesus is, as they did on that day, we begin to make our journey. We begin to make our journey to that place where we're finally transformed as fully to the disciples of Christ and to one day hear the voice of, of Jesus say to us, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. There's a lot of things in the scriptures that talks about uh, being transformed or, or being part of what Jesus does for us as he transforms us. And I want to share just a few of those with you. Uh, as we uh, are called today to to be transformed and to follow Jesus as we know who he is now, having seen his transfiguration. In Psalms 51 and 10 it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And that's part of our, our transformation, part of knowing who Jesus is, really knowing and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And then in Ezekiel 18 and 31 it says, Cast away you all my transgressions, which you have committed and make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For while we die, O house of Israel. And then as we know who Jesus is and we really identify him into our lives, as I did that day when I accepted him as Lord and Savior, and you did, I remember saying, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. For I have sinned against you, I have sinned against your love and your nature. God, forgive me and make me a new heart. And Jesus did that. And I was began to be transformed and knew who Jesus really was. He was not some distant teacher or some prophet or some great religious leader. But for me, he became my dearest friend. For me, he became the Lord of lords and the King of kings of my life. And I knew that he was more than I ever imagined. And I began to be transformed. Because I knew, as Peter did, as James and John did, who Jesus was. In Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Isn't that amazing how God in that transformation, as we know who Jesus is, can transform even the hardest of hearts into a heart of flesh that feels the kindness and love of God. And then in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, the new things have come. Do you know who Jesus is? If you really know who he is, then you would want to be transformed. Just like John and James and Peter, they began to see who Jesus was from the words of God who said, This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. It's a very important piece of information that God has given us on that mountain to remind us if we want to be transformed like the butterfly or we want to be transformed uh, into a new creature and have a new heart and new spirit given within us, then we need to know who Jesus is. 
And if we know who Jesus is, we know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He'll always be with us, even to the ends of time. We know that life is fleeting and very precious. Jesus is the Savior of life. It says that he overcome death in the grave, that you and I might live and not go through the second death, but that we might live eternally, that transformation, because we know who Jesus is. And then in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. And then Ephesians 4, 22 and 24, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and you be renewed in spirit of your mind, and put on the new self, which is, and hear this, which is the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. And then Colossians 1, 21 through 22. And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, and before Peter and James and John really knew who Jesus was, there was a sense of alienation because they really didn't know completely who he was. But now that they know, that has been moved away. Once we were engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you. That great divide that we once had from sin in the Garden of Eden to now has been filled with Jesus. There's a bridge that's been built. And he has put on the new self with the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness, holiness, and truth. And Jesus has gone through the bodily death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. So now that we know who Jesus is, we know that he can cleanse our sins. We know that he can make us whole again. He can make us a new creature, put off the old person with their deeds, and make all things new. And then finally in this word we find it says in Titus 3, 5, he saved us. Not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. There's not anything we can really do, is there? Not enough, not enough deeds we can do to secure our way to heaven. But it says by the mercy, the mercy of God, by washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's some passages I want to share with you, but I, but I want you to really think about being transformed today. The transfiguration reminds us who Jesus is, but from that point forward, we have to be transformed and be made new in Christ. And it's a daily experience. Every day we are being transformed into that which God wants us to be, that fully evolved disciple of Christ. When I was about eight years old, um, this is getting close to springtime. What do we start to see now? We start to see buttercups, don't we? I seen where one girl put, I hope that this is a real spring and not just tricking us. You know, I hope it's not just a, a fake spring that's coming on. Because we love spring. I love spring. You know that. I love planting. I love uh, growing little gardens and things and all that. I love flowers. Uh, my shamrock plant uh, has just come out. Beautiful flowers again on it. It's got purple and white. Uh, I thought the thing had died again, but I went in there and, and, and talked to it and done all that stuff you have to do. And it's come back beautiful, got big leaves on it. Uh, I had neglected it a little bit and it's come back. But anyway, the story about right now is when I was eight years old, we went to my grandma's place and we were digging up some flowers. She was moving to a new place. And so those flowers, what I understand, there were some buttercups out there. And I made a comment to mom at eight year old, I would like to have one. To plan out, you know, we had a tree house that Dad had built out there behind the house, the side of the house. And I said, I'd like to plant one out there by our tree house, I guess, so I could look out and see it, you know, when it come out. And, and so she said, yeah, get you one. I don't know it'll grow out there. That's out there in the woods. It's, you know, it's not really a good place for life. But if that's where you want to put it, put it. So I planted it right next to this oak tree. And the oak tree at that time was about this big. Now it's about this big. And behind that oak tree, if you go out there today, it should be blooming out pretty soon, the next few days, uh, you'll see that buttercup stem start to come out. And what it once used to be just one little flower, now it's got several that's come on. It's really beautiful. 
And I think about that flower. I think about the faith I must have had an eight-year-old to think that thing was going to live. You know, as, as a child, we believe. We have the faith. It says have the faith of a child, and that's what I had. And so I believed that if I planted that bug, that it would come forth and it would bloom. And it did. And not only that, but I go back to it every year, and it's been 50, uh, 52 years now since that thing was planted. And it gets more beautiful every year. It's a reminder that if we have faith, and we allow God to nurture us, and realize who Jesus is, and to follow his path, that he would develop us into what God's glory looks like. I know on Ash Wednesday we say you're a dust and you turn to dust. But there's a lot of wonderful things happening from birth to the grave. And that's where God works with us. He developed us into that beautiful flower, that butterfly. He transforms us. But our first step is knowing who Jesus is. So I pray today you'll be transformed by the story that we've heard. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your word that reminds us of the steps we need to take from this day forward. Let us be transformed here at Riverside. Let us be transformed by the transfiguration of Jesus. Knowing who he is, following him, and Lord, having faith that he will use us, he will mold us, he will make us into something more wonderful because we are created by him. Let us be the disciples that have seen Jesus and have listened to the voice of the Father who said, This is my beloved. Listen to him. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 2272 in your hymn. Uh, the faith we sing, Holy Ground. We will sing it twice through. Please stand if able. <laughs> kind of transformed. He was bigger all the <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope that this day will be a great day for you as it has been already for us as we've been in God's house with God's people. Like-minded people coming together to worship and to praise Him. This is a day to be re-energized with God's mercy. I remind you that you're not alone in this journey that you have. That God is with you. Our hearts and minds clear today. We do have some Girl Scouts selling cookies at the Kroger today. I know we got at least some. They, they told me they was having uh, this week over there. And so uh, the story. So go by and see them and uh, get your uh, fix from your cookies. Uh, 
It's always good to support our kids any way we can. They do a great thing. All hearts and minds clear. Don't forget, the bell ringing this afternoon. No. Part of that, we've got a good group. Well, let's pray together. God, we go forth now to serve you wherever you may call. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful music and for the fellowship and the time we've served together. And Lord, may we now go out re-energized and ready to serve, transformed from who we were to who we'll be. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Make sure you welcome one another. Amen.